the entrance antiphon for the Thursday of the seventh week of Easter. With boldness, let us approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace as a timely help. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, we still celebrate with Easter joy the rising of Christ from the dead as this holy Easter season is drawing to a conclusion. Let us enter worthily once more into these paschal mysteries by now acknowledging our sinfulness before the Lord and the need we have for his grace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, who pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts, that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought, brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some were Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, <clears throat> and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take them into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Keep me safe, O God. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, I, Lord, are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O Lord, God. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. 
Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through your through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you love me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I may know to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my brothers and sisters, there's a couple of stories from the Acts of the Apostles that I find hilarious, actually. One was a few days ago when they brought uh, Paul before the Roman Tribune on charges, and uh, apparently they were instigated by a guy named Sosthenes. And the Roman procurator, he just said, I'm not going to listen to you. This is your deal. Leave me out of this. And when he, they were rejected, they started beating this guy up right in his presence, a guy named Sosthenes. And Gallio just goes, ooh, 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 ooh. You know, <laughs> nothing going on here. The other one is today, where, where St. Paul is before the Sanhedrin. I think this is great. He realizes that of the 72 men sitting in front of him, uh, some are Pharisees, some are Sadducees, and they don't get along. They hate each other. They can't agree on anything. And so, for instance, so Paul basically says, I don't, I'm not going to deal with these people. So he gets up there and says, look, we all know why I'm on trial here, because I'm a Pharisee, and I believe in the resurrection. And all the Pharisees go, yeah. And all the Sadducees go, no. And all of a sudden, Paul steps back and lets these two different groups duke it out. And they're going back and forth. And, well, what if an angel? There are no angels. And, oh, man, and Paul's going, ooh, 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 you know, this is great, you know. Pretty clever. I like this stuff. Um, today's gospel is very interesting. We're getting to the end of St. John's gospel in Jesus' high priestly prayer, his farewell to the church, his getting them ready for when he would be gone and they'd be doing the heavy lifting. And again, St. John has his very own unique vocabulary. There are certain words, buzzwords that pop up all the time. And you've got to understand what they mean. One of them is the word world. You know, he says you are in the world, but you're not of the world. St. Uh, Jesus says, I do not pray for the world. Um, I have conquered the world. He calls Satan the prince of this world. What's he talking about? There's, there's two different senses of the word world. One is kind of neutral, neither good nor bad. It's just planet Earth is where we live, you know. <clears throat> it could be Afghanistan, it could be Kenya, it could be Canada, it could be, you know, it's just a place where you happen to be right now. And that's neither good nor bad. But there's a definite pejorative sense of the word world, and that's the one that is used most frequently. 
And it's, it's not, it doesn't ad, uh, describe a place, but an attitude, a way of thinking. And that is the way of thinking that this world is all there is. Don't think about the life to come. Just concentrate on planet Earth. Uh, the only problems we have are earthly problems. The only cares we have are earthly cares. The only joys we have are earthly joys. Because it's the work of the devil to get us to focus on that so strongly that we forget, hey, there's something that comes after this one. I mean, you know, let's face it. But, you know, you, you may have problems that last to the day you die, but the day you die, they're over. And same thing for all your successes. Years ago when I was in the seminary, we used to go over to Bell Fountain neighbors here to the state school for the mentally handicapped. Um, it was a great, <laughs> we had a great time with those kids. We called them kids. They had the mentality of children, although they were in their 20s and 30s. I remember one day we went there, and one of the kids, he was so excited. Apparently, they had been playing Monopoly. And he says, hey, you guys, I had hotels on Boardwalk and Park Place. And he was so thrilled. He had hotels on Boardwalk and Park Place. And I was just thinking, oh, yeah, great. <laughs> you know, fine. You know, that's wonderful. Um, can you imagine somebody applying for a job with a Fortune 500 company, putting on his resume, I had hotels on Boardwalk and Park Place? It's not going to make much of an impact. Um, you may actually, I mean, I think, I think President Trump actually owned hotels on the Boardwalk in Atlantic City, literally. But when he stands before God, it ain't going to mean nothing, you know? All the things that we think are such wonderful stuff here on Earth means nothing in the days to come. Same thing with all the sufferings we go through. They will be as nothing when we stand before the Lord. My brothers and sisters, it is the work of the evil one to get us to be so fixated on this world as to forget there is a world coming after this one. Don't get too attached to this planet, the Lord is warning us, because it all passes away, and we certainly before it. So when you hear the Lord talking about the world, you understand that He's most likely talking about that attitude, to be so f concerned about what happens, good and bad, that we forget that this world is just a temporary thing, that the real thing comes after this. And I thank you for this. O oh, Heavenly Father, we realize how much we depend upon the good things you provide for us each day and recognize that you are the author of every good thing. So we turn to you once again, trusting in your fatherly care for each of us to provide us with the things we need. For Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all church leaders, if they will guide us all to fix our eyes on heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. So we are throughout the world, especially those in our land. They will work to bring about peace and justice and safety for all people and to protect life from conception and natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those afflicted with the coronavirus, that they may find healing. Those who are without work at this time may find suitable work soon. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all the poor, sick, and elderly, that they will have their needs fulfilled. Let us pray to the Lord. And for suitable weather for the farmers, that they may plant their crops. For an abundant harvest, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. And for all those who have died, those who have perished, family and friends, and those who have no one to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, may the sacrifice that we offer give you glory, the glory you deserve from your humble creatures. We ask you to hear our prayers and help us to see how you answer them may thank you all the more. We ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us. 
the bread of life. And blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is the sacrifice of your people. Lord of praise and glory to the Lord. And the Lord. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers of his divinity. Overcome, therefore, with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, Mark, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall live.
And let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring, and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, the Prince of the Stars, the Archangel.